I'm already, I'm already doing that, Jesus. What else do I have to do? I mean, I, I've got that covered. I've been doing that since I was born. Right? I, that's no problem. I got it all taken care of. Right? How, how many of you, myself included, have kept all of these commandments? That's why I'm putting my hands in my pocket. That's right. Clyde's like, keep your hands in your pocket so they don't accidentally shoot up, right? Yeah, none of us have kept all of these commandments. But yet this guy says, when Jesus says, what do I do? He says, Jesus, tell me what I need to do to get eternal life. And Jesus says, keep all the commandments. And he's like, well, I've done that ever since I was a little boy without any problems. And Jesus says, yeah, right. <laughs> tell, me, tell me the truth now. That's not what he says. Jesus looked at him, loved him, or looked at him lovingly, depending upon your translation, and said, you lack one thing. Go and sell everything that you own and give it to the poor. And then come and follow me. And what did the guy do? He went away. He was shocked, surprised, and he went away grieving because he had many possessions. And what happened to this guy? What happened to the rich man? We have no clue. We have no idea what happened to this guy because he went away grieving. He could have went away grieving. He could have been shocked. He could have went away and he could have said, okay, I'm going to go sell everything I got. He could have been one of the disciples that was with Jesus at the, at the last supper. He could have gone away and said, I'm not going to sell all my stuff because I really like my stuff. But what is Jesus trying to say here? What is it that we need to hear in this? And here's one way you could go with this, right? Jesus looked at this guy and knew that he had a lot of possessions, and he said, you, you need to keep up the commandments. And when he said, Jesus, I've already been doing that. And Jesus is like, okay, then here's what you need to do. You need to dispose of all of your stuff and get rid of it, because all the stuff in the world that you have is bad. And then you need to come and follow after me, because I'm the only thing that's good. Now, before you start jumping up and leaving, I said, one way that we could read this is, Jesus said. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus looked at him and loved him and said, where's your focus? Because right? we can't say that stuff is bad. Because stuff's not bad. Because who created everything? God did. God created everything. So therefore, stuff is not bad. Depends on how we use it and how we where our focus is at, right? Because I know two different couples. One of them are members of this congregation, and one of them are not. One of them's name is um, Todd and Angela Bean. And Todd and Angela are friends of mine and Krista's from North Carolina. They live in. Lincolnton, North Carolina. Um, Ta, um, Charles was, I don't know if he still is or not, but he was a representative for Lutheran Brotherhood, which became Fragment. And the, the members of the congregations that we were members at with them, they gave each month and this was public knowledge to the congregation, so I'm not saying anything here that wasn't known by everybody there. They gave $1,000 a month, at least. Depends on what kind of month Charles had. If he had a really good month, it was a lot more than that. And they didn't let people know that because they were flaunting it. They let people know that because they were living out what God had called them to do with the stuff that they had been blessed with. Right? They were giving back because that's what they had been given. And what they had been given to use in a way to give to God. So there's a minimum of $1,000 a month, or more, depending upon whether or not Lutheran Brotherhood or Thriving at that point in time has, you know, has representatives make money off of you. If you didn't know that, the representatives make money off of you if you have Thriving accounts. You don't make a lot of money, but they do get paid back when you get paid back. So that's an example of how we use our resources, right? Charles and Angela were were committed to using what God had blessed them with to help bless others. And that was just their church giving. As a couple, they gave way above and beyond that. 
Um, they were always present. They were always helping out. They were giving to other organizations. They were doing things out there because that's what they were. They knew that they were blessed to be a blessing. Right? Because this next part God that Jesus goes into talks about how, how anyone can be saved. Right? The disciples are like, well then how can any of us possibly be saved? And Jesus says, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to go to heaven. So now we have to define what it means to be rich. What does it mean to be poor? What is the one thing that a rich man doesn't have, but a poor man has in abundance? Yeah. <laughs> no, because the rich have probably just as much percentage-wise as the poor do. What is it that a rich man has, doesn't have, but a poor man has in abundance? Say it louder. Nothing. Nothing. Rich man doesn't have nothing, because rich man has everything he wants. The poor man has an abundance of nothing, for whatever reason. And maybe that's what Jesus is trying to get this guy to look at. You need to be focused on... It makes sense, you just have to think about it a little bit. My children up here are looking at me like I'm crazy, so... but. Jesus wanted this guy to focus on having nothing and focusing on Jesus rather than focusing on his stuff, right? It's about where our focus lies. So Jesus says that it's going to be hard because you can't take your focus away from your stuff and look and focus on me. So Jesus says that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to go to heaven. So how many of you have heard about this gate, this mysterious gate that was supposedly at Jerusalem. I got two people. So now I'm going to debunk this for every last one of you. Supposedly there's this gate in Jesus' day around Jerusalem that was called the, the Eye of the Needle. And it was a gate that was designed to be used at night supposedly for a more secure city in the wall so that if you were to come in and bring your camels, your camels would fit, but they would actually have to get on their knees and everything would have to come off of them. They couldn't go through this gate with any items on them. Everything that they were carrying would have to be removed and carried in by hand, and the camels could scoot through the gate on their knees. There was just enough room for the camels to get through. And the reason that this was designed was to help with security, right? So you couldn't bring in a bunch of people and have... It's, it's, it was a myth. It didn't actually exist. This, this concept was probably brought out about 150, 200 years ago to kind of soften what Jesus is saying here, right? Because obviously there has to be a way for a camel to go through the eye of a needle when Jesus is saying this. Well, maybe there's not. Maybe it's Jesus really saying, this might be hard for some of you to not think about all of your stuff or focus on all of your stuff rather than focusing on. Jesus says that you need to let go of all of earthly possessions and follow after me. Because it's not about what's impossible for us. Because is it possible for us to, to not focus on the stuff that we have? Because society tells us if you live in the world today, you know and you've seen TV commercials after ads, after whatever bulletin boards, after everything that says you need to have this toothpaste to make your life great. And you need to have this whatever to make your life perfect. And that's the way life gives it to us. But Jesus says, don't worry about all of that. Because that's not what it's about. And in our state, it's impossible to do that. But with God, everything is possible. So if we can only turn our focus on the God, God will help us get through. Right? So who can be saved? Who can, who can be saved? You're all supposed to raise your hands here. Let's try this again. Who can be saved? We all can. Not because of anything that we've done or haven't done. It's because of what God is doing for us. And if we can take our focus from the things that we have and focus completely on God, then it's not going to be a problem for us to give up everything. Because everything that we've been given was given to us as a blessing to us for us to use in response to others. So is it bad to be rich? No. 
Because here's, here's your other understanding. Everybody in this room, and I've said this in here before, everybody in this room is in the richest top probably 10% of the world. Because most of us have a home where we can where we live. Most of us have food every night. Most of us have clothes that we can wear. I bet most of you have more than one pair of shoes. I was going to ask this morning, how many pairs of shoes do you have? And I was going to have you raise your hand each time and see whose hand was left up. But I realized mine would probably be up last, so I didn't want to do that. Right? You have multiple pairs of shoes, you have multiple pairs of pants, you have multiple shirts, you have multiple things that you can do. And, and while we don't think that we are rich in the world's economy, you are rich. And to me, it's not about the money anyhow. No matter how much money you have or don't have, the richness that you have comes from the blessings that God has given you in your lives. Your children, your grandchildren, your friends. Right? It's not about wealth, because wealth is just a tool to be used. Wealth is a blessing that you've been given to, to use for others. To end this morning, I want to I want to bring up a, a a picture that I saw this past week. I did some research to see if it was true or not, and I didn't find anything to say it was true. I didn't find anything to say it wasn't true. So it may or may not be true. But from what I know about this person, I don't know this person personally, but what I know about this person, I've read about this person, I can see where it could be true. Um, J.K. Rowling. How many of you know who J.K. Rowling is? She's the author of the Harry Potter books, right? She, she was a billionaire. And the thing that I saw recently said that, that J.K. Rowling is the first person in the world to lose their billionaire status because they gave money away. And the reason that she cited for this is because, just what I said a few minutes ago, she knows that what she has has been a blessing given to her, and she needs to help others because that's what we're each called to do, to look out for those who can't help themselves. So if you've been blessed, then be a blessing. And each one of us has been blessed. So don't worry about trying to fit the camel through the needle's eye. Just worry about focusing on Jesus. And know that if you focus on Jesus and follow where he's leading you, that that camel's going to slide right through that eye of that needle. Because what's impossible for us is not impossible for you. So you've been blessed to be a blessing. So go and be a blessing.